Member statements. The member for London North Centre. Mr. Speaker, last week my community and our province experienced an unspeakable tragedy. Words are not enough to express the sorrow and anger we are all feeling. We mourn for a child who was left without his family, and we mourn for three generations of a family taken from us too soon. As a community, we are united in grief and anger. The London Muslim community is well known for selfless works of kindness and their support for the broader community. I have been welcomed warmly to join them in times of celebration, and my heart goes out to them now. The Afzal Salman family were loved. How can we honour their lives and bring about lasting change? Now is the time to call not only for justice, but action. These murders are part of a rising tide of Islamophobia and white supremacist hate, and it is critical that we stand together as neighbours, Ontarians and Canadians to call out and push back against this pernicious, deadly hate wherever we see it, and to build a plan to eradicate Islamophobia once and for all. As we heard at the vigil for our London family, hate is like a fire, and once it takes hold, it consumes all. But fires can be extinguished. They can be stopped. We can stop them. As your MPP, I commit to calling for a national summit and as your fellow community member, I commit to always see you with love and intervene if I see treatment otherwise. Love is the antidote to hate. Together, let's honour the Afzal family, Salman family by putting more love into this world. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for mississauga Malton. Mr. Speaker, over the last few months, while hard-working Ontarians across the province have been rolling up their sleeve to receive the vaccine, many of them have also been rolling up their sleeve for an equally important life-saving reason. June 14th is World Blood Donor Day, a day to raise awareness about the truly life-saving gift of blood donation. While roughly half of all Canadians are eligible, Mr. Speaker, only 2% actually donate blood. This means that Ontario has to rely up to 83% of our plasma needs from paid donors in the U.S. and across the world. To keep up the growing demand for blood, Canada needs around 100,000 more donors every year. As hospitals ramp up elective surgeries, it is clear that we need more and more neighbourhood heroes to roll up their sleeves and donate blood. That is why, Mr. Speaker, I'm thrilled to share that our office will be organizing a community blood drive in my riding of Mississauga Malton on June 16th and 23rd. I will encourage every member of the community to make a difference. Let's keep the world beating. I would also like to acknowledge and thank staff and volunteer at Canadian Blood Services for their hard work and advocacy. Thank you for connecting patients with the gift of life and to each and every single Ontarian who has donated blood. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for stepping up and saving lives. With that, Mr. Speaker, happy World Blood Donor Day. Thank you so much. Member Statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, January 14, 2021 is going to go down in infamy in Ontario history. Today is the day that the government is expected to be voting to override the charter rights of the people of this province for the first time. In March, the government passed changes to the Election Act. They made two changes. The first one increased the donation limit in a way that favours conservative donors who tend to be wealthier. And the th second one restricted third-party advertising for one year before the next election. Both of these seem designed to, to help the Conservatives get re-elected. The, the second one restricts the criteria for, for uh, third-party advertising. Uh, the, the government, over the next year, can spend as much money, taxpayer money, as it likes advertising. What a wonderful job it's done to support small businesses on long-term care homes, on, on the, their environmental record, on the success of online learning. And the other health care agencies, environmental agencies, will be restricted in their ability to counter with the fact that this government did not move to increase supports for small businesses until 25,000 had gone, had gone bankrupt, until 4,000 deaths had taken place in long-term care, and that online learning has been a disaster for many, many of the students in this province. A few days ago, a, a judge ruled that this, this legislation breached the charter rights of the people of, of this province. So what did the government do? They chose to override the charter rights of the people of this province, and that's what they're going to be voting on this afternoon, and it's absolutely shameful. 
Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ontarians in Richmond Hill and across the province are still processing the horrific tragedy that took place in London, Ontario. Over the past week, many in our province showed our solidarity to Ontario's Muslim community. Last night, I attended an interfaith prayer vigil in Richmond Hill. I was moved to see the outpouring of love and support my community displayed to our grieving Muslim friends. I was touched by the prayers offered by different faith groups. Indeed, we are all one in love. Mr. Speaker, this is the Ontario that I know. This is the love and kindness that Ontario represents. We are a province of acceptance equality and freedom for all people that will never change. While it will take time to bring the healing and comfort to the loved ones, friends and community of the Afsad family, Ontarians in Richmond Hill and across the province stand in solidarity mm -hmm. with all our Muslim friends and neighbours. My respect to all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, let's take a look at what this Conservative government has done in the past few days and let the people judge if the government is on the right path and if they think that this government has their best interests at heart. Over the weekend, Premier Ford recalled the legislature for emergency night sessions to rush through a bill that uses the notwithstanding clause overriding charter rights for the first time in Ontario's history. We could be working on a plan to reopen schools safely this September, but instead we're debating a bill that allows the government to disregard court orders. We could be fixing the eviction and homelessness crisis, but instead we're dealing with a bill that allows the government to muzzle their critics. We could be spending time addressing the skyrocketing overdose deaths in this province, but instead we're spending time on a bill that's unconstitutional. We could be looking to provide more support for small businesses, but instead we're looking at a bill that doubles the donation limit for those with deep pockets. We could be creating a strategy for action on anti-racism and Islamophobia, but the only strategy this government is interested in is how they can cling on to power. We could have an emergency debate on searching the grounds of all former residential schools, but instead we ended up having an emergency debate on how this government is attacking people's rights and freedoms. Speaker, this government puts so much time and energy into things that are damaging when there are so many critical and urgent issues that need to be addressed. We need to address issues that help the people, not on how this government can help themselves get re-elected through abuse of power. Member Statements, the member for Guelph. Speaker, I'm going to use my time today to amplify the voice of Sar Saheed, who spoke at the vigil for the Abzal family, organized by the Muslim Society of Guelph, and I quote from her speech, assaulted while shopping, attacked while taking public transit, killed while praying in a mosque, murdered while taking a walk. This has become the reality for Muslim families across Canada. Leaving the house requires a checklist of safety precautions. The MSOG has spent the last several years building bridges. Here is the result. Over a thousand of you are here to mourn and grieve with us. But it means nothing if we do not stand up to white supremacy. We need a commitment from all levels of government and police services to a national action summit on Islamophobia. There are still too many people in power who support systemic racism, and too many of us remain silent." End quote, Speaker. Sarah, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your wise words and your call to action. And I call on everyone in this House to answer her call in the calls of Muslims across Canada for a National Action Summit Against Islamophobia. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Speaker. 
Last week on Sunday, June 6, four members of a Muslim family were killed in a targeted and hate-motivated attack in London, Ontario. This family was going for a walk, but unfortunately couldn't make it home as they were all targeted because of their Muslim faith. We are shocked and horrified by this attack and that all Ontarians stand in solidarity with the victim's loved ones during this extremely difficult time. Speaker, it was an act of terrorism as this family's life were lives were taken in a brutal, cowardly, and brazen act of violence targeted for their religion. From this August house, I would say sorry to my Muslim brothers and sisters in London and across the province for this insane and tragic act of violence. I would also like to ask my Muslim brothers and sisters to look over the shoulders and see that you're surrounded by love. This love is unwavering and unconditional and it is with you always. We all grieve with Muslim community members in London and across the province because this is the pain they have known before. Through you, Speaker, I would say it is our duty to stand strong against hate. It is our duty to stand strong against Islamophobia. And it is our duty to stand strong against terror with faith, with love, and a quest for justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this morning I rise to bring forward the growing concerns brought forward by my constituents about a crisis that's been brewing quietly but dangerously across our province, the declining mental health of youth, especially over the last 15 months. Just in the past weeks, we held roundtables on education and mental health. Parents and teachers shared emotional stories, Speaker, seeing active and vibrant kids start to become more withdrawn and dealing with social anxiety. These are our little ones who have been neglected by this government's back and forth on online and in-person schools this past year. Lost and, and lost a year of education, they lost their development uh, and much needed socializing with their friends and peers. Young people who have been waiting for months to find a therapist, for example, resorted to stopgap solutions like walk-in clinics or therapy apps. They talked about therapy apps because they had nowhere else to go. Some have, been given, some have even given up because the, because the cost of mental health is not covered, it's not supported by our health care in this province. There are many things that we don't know about this post-pandemic uh, world this, the, that's going to happen, Speaker. But what we do know is that we simply cannot go on like this. Our already broken mental health system is about to become more overwhelmed than ever. And Ontario's children and youth deserve a recovery that focuses on their well-being and focuses on the mental health of all across this province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Last Sunday, our province witnessed a horrible Islamophobic terrorist attack, which killed three generations of the Afzal family and orphaned a nine years old child. I condemn this heinous act, and I stand in solidarity with the Afzal family and the Muslim community in Ontario and in Canada. There is no space for hate in our Canada. Canada is a diverse nation, one that hosts all faiths, races, and cultures. Our Canadian democracy is built on the cornerstones of freedom of speech and freedom of religion. We are a beacon of peace and multiculturalism in the world. Canadians opened their arms, hearts, and welcomed thousands of immigrants who escaped the religious discrimination and persecution in their original home countries. Sometimes we tend to forget this and take it for granted. But the truth is, we have to keep reminding ourselves to stand and defend those values. The freedom of religion is not about allowing people to practice their faith. It goes all the way to respect everyone's choice of religion, lifestyle, <coughs> or even simpler items like food and risco. Mr. Speaker, no one should fear for their lives because of their faith. As a Canadian Coptic Christian, I have lived these fears myself when I was listed on, uh, on the tourist group Al-Qaeda hit list in 2020, 2010, fear for my family's safety and mine. I mention this because having experienced racism and discrimination firsthand from a young age, I understand how fear and frustration can be. That's why I stand in solidarity with everyone 
and anyone have, who have been subjected to discrimination or persecution. As the most eager defenders of religions, uh, freedoms, and human rights are the people who have been victims of lacking of it themselves. As a proud Canadian with a Canadian spirit, I hope we all accepting each other's differences, respect and protect each other. Oh, Canada, we stand in guard for you. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted to share that on May 12th of this year, my first private member's bill, Bill 112, entitled Lupus Awareness Day Act 2021, received royal assent. <laughs> this bill proclaimed May 10th of each year as Lupus Awareness Day. On that day, Ontarians are encouraged to wear a ribbon or any article of light purple clothing to display solidarity with those who live, have survived, or have succumbed to lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disease which is typically characterized by inflammation in one or more parts of the body. This disease attacks body's immune system, leaving it unable to differentiate between intruders and healthy tissues. As a result, vital organs are damaged, causing pain and organ dysfunction in the body. Mr. Speaker, lupus affects one out of every 1,000 Canadian men, women, and children. However, women are eight times more likely to contract the disease. While diagnosis and treatment for lupus are improving, Proclaiming a day of awareness of lupus will help to inspire, inform, and support individuals with lupus. Although May 10th has passed, I still encourage everyone across Ontario to research and learn more about lupus. Together, let's continue to educate ourselves, spread awareness, and support those with lupus. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our member statements for this morning.